Hello and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. Today we are discussing the topic of foreign filing licenses and what you need to know when it comes to protecting your invention in other countries. So first, what is a foreign filing license? The main motivation for this is that before you are allowed to disclose your invention to other countries through filing foreign patent applications, the United States wants to check and see if your invention has any national security implications or some other national interest and perhaps is better kept out of foreign countries. If you do not get a foreign filing license, then in most cases, six months after you file your U.S. application, it is permissible to then file in foreign countries. An exception to this would be a secrecy order that could issue, which could prevent disclosure of the invention. This is rare, but can happen for situations involving national security. An important thing to realize is that this is an automatic process. You don't explicitly apply for a foreign filing license. It's usually automatically granted within a few weeks of filing your patent application in the U.S. And it is typically indicated on your filing receipt, which you receive typically two to six weeks after you file your application. Here is an example of a filing receipt. Typically, these are sent out within two to six weeks after filing your patent application. Usually at the bottom, you will see a statement like this. If required, foreign filing license granted and the date it was granted. So in this particular case, you can see that the application was filed on November 3rd, 2017. That's the top box. And at the bottom, we see that the foreign filing license was granted on November 15th, 2017. So just about two weeks. So normally you won't have to wait too long to get your foreign filing license. The key is you don't want to file in other countries until you get that foreign filing license granted. So to summarize, wait for the filing receipt before filing in any other countries or jurisdictions. Typically you won't have to wait too long as we discussed, just a few weeks. If for some reason you don't see that foreign filing license granted at the bottom of your filing receipt, there is a fail-safe mechanism that you will basically, unless there is some explicit condition like a secrecy order, then after six months, you can file in foreign countries. And as we were discussing previously, a secrecy order can be placed on an invention. This is rare, but it can happen if the Patent Office deems the disclosure of the invention to be a threat to national security. It is rare, but with the millions and millions of applications filed, I'm sure it does happen from time to time, though I've never encountered anything that uh, was placed in a secrecy order or did not get a foreign filing license granted. So it is a uh, pretty unusual occurrence. The takeaway for most inventors is that if you're eager and ready to protect your idea all over the world and file applications in multiple countries, wait until you are clear to file in those countries, either through the foreign filing license, FFL, or the six months period. Otherwise, you risk losing your rights to patent your invention. So that's the main takeaway. And as a side note, the United States is not the only country that has the concept of the FFL. Numerous other countries have it. I know India has a similar rule because in some situations, if I'm preparing a patent application that has inventors from India, we can't file the U.S. application until India grants a foreign filing license to allow those inventors to file their invention in the United States. This information comes from the Manual of Patent Examination Procedure, often referred to as the MPEP or MPEP. It is basically a guidebook on how to interpret the patent rules, laws, and results of important court decisions. It is relied upon by both patent examiners and patent professionals, and it is available to the public at the link shown here, and I will also put this link in the video description. In particular, this section of the MPEP 140 discusses this topic in further detail and can cover additional corner cases, rules, and exceptions, which were not covered here. So if you want to learn more about this topic, you can check out that section. So I hope you found this to be interesting and helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.